Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Rapid Recap here at Inside Nebraska. As always, he's Greg Smith and I'm Zach Carpenter. And today, Monday afternoon, after the Michigan game, lead up to Illinois. Uh, maybe not fiery Matt Rule, but an intense Matt Rule at the podium today. Locked in Matt Rule at the podium today. I think it is good. I think those are good words. Um, he was sending a message, I think, to a lot of people um, either inside of this building and inside of the, the complex on his team and his staff. I think also a little bit to fans too um, about because I think that there was a lot of talk after that game about a lack of intensity from Nebraska's team. I thought that after the game and his press conference remarks, you could see in the beginning he was kind of warming up after the game and then by the end he was spitting a little fire. Mm -hmm. Today there's no mistaking how upset he was about that game. <laughs> yeah, that was the but one of the more interesting takeaways from the post-game press conference is after like the sixth or seventh question, however many it was, he's like, I could tell by your guys' questions that uh, there's a little bit of a, well, did they really come out? Uh, like, did they really come out with energy? Did they really show that effort? And I felt like he answered that a little bit today where he, a big part of it was, like you said, sending that message to his team through the media, which as a side note, he now has done that a few times where, and he did it two, three times a day where a lot of coaches will talk privately about how he wants to send a message to the team, but he, since he's come here, has not really had, uh, made any bones about the fact that I'm sending a message to our to my guys right now. And he said that publicly during today's press conference, like, I'm sending a message. Which I think is fascinating because because there's so much of us, I think that there is a way that you can use that to your benefit, right? Like, instead of just saying, oh, none of us pay attention to anything that the media says, which is, al which is always, always, always a lie. Yeah. Always. Um, instead of saying that, he's kind of in his own way embracing that the messages are going to get out there because he's also commented a couple of times, just kind of offhandedly um, here and there about how every little thing is talked about here. And so if you go up there and you're like he was today, it's definitely going to go out there. We let our video with it. Everyone's going to be leading with that. Um, he was sending a message and had a lot of fire today. Yeah, when you're playing in a fishbowl and you address the fact that you're playing in a fishbowl, mm -hmm. I do think that's honestly more productive than right. if you just try to ignore it and say, no, we don't, we don't really pay attention to all that. But then right after a game at so many times, whether it's Nebraska or other programs, you'll hear, yeah, you hear it all over. The place. Yeah, <laughs> we're not paying attention to that. And then right after the game, if, if it's a win, well, and then you they call address out, something. You name every single specific thing that was said. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, well, I thought you weren't paying attention. But right. then you find out retroactively uh, they absolutely were paying attention. So they hear it. They try to block it out. But uh, one of the things that uh, that rule did talk about, he, uh, he hammered home the importance of today is he didn't feel like the guys were playing. We talk about blocking the out, that outside noise, and it sounds like he doesn't think that they are blocking that, blocking out that that outside noise. But the way he talked about the Michigan game today, where he said guys were playing tight and not like just going out there and playing, they felt like they were sort of just we have to play to not lose, not going out there to win. Yeah, which is interesting, and that's the other side of the coin of all of the coverage and the fan fervor and all of that is that there is a lot of pressure on this team, and I would say more so than what you would normally see in a year one of a new coach that is also, oh, by the way, known for tearing everything down and rebuilding it. There is a lot of talk and a lot of upset people about it. it's been this long since they've done this or this many years or whatever, and people have got to keep in mind that it has been not that long for Matt Rule. They didn't hear Steve Mark always said he's been here two minutes. What do you mm -hmm. want? It's only been a handful of games, but people are naturally feeling that angst from a lot of people would say 20 years of trying to build it back. But that I think plays a role in how the players go out and play so tight because they're afraid to make mistakes. When Matt Rule is able to kind of get that out of the program, I do think you'll see a lot more wins, but that's going to be a process because it's a chicken or the egg type of a situation as well. Yeah, I mean, I go back to what, what uh, Clint Cosgrove of National Analysts at Rivals, he wrote a couple weeks ago, uh, I think it was after the, the Colorado loss, so he said Matt Rule and Nebraska are going to need something from Husker fans that they are not accustomed to showing patience. Yeah. And we talked about that all off season. It feels like once 
the <laughs> games actually do get played, then that's out the, the window. Out the window. It was so good in the off season where people were saying, oh yeah, we know it's going to take time. The team has holes. It's going to take time to fix it. This guy is a builder. And then the first game hits and it's all out the window, um, like you said. So yeah, we'll see. They've got a big opportunity though coming up this Friday. And I think that people will definitely be tuning in to see it. I'm curious on what that atmosphere is going to be like on Friday in person. But I also think that a lot of people will be tuning in, hoping to find out what this team is made of. And Matt Rule kind of made mention of that today. And one, one more point I wanted to highlight was you've been saying this since, I, I don't even know, you've, I, you've been the first one on this for a while now. And Matt Rule is paying for the sins of previous mm -hmm. coaches' failures or previous coaches' sins. He's paying for the, yeah. the price for that now. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's every it, – because you could see it in the offseason a little bit. Even though people were trying to exercise patience, there was a lot of, oh, man, Matt Rule said this at a press conference. Oh, man, Bo Pelini used to say that. It used to be us against the world. Or Scott Frost said this, and Matt Rule said something similar. And I'm just like – I don't think he's thinking about that one bit. <laughs> no. He has no idea what, what Bo Pelini said at press conferences. And so people kind of grabbing onto that stuff. You just knew that once the rubber met the road and they lost the game and that was going to happen, it's not as if anyone thought they were going to go undefeated, um, that things would kind of go sideways on them in a hurry. And that is what it is. I think that he's paying for those past sins, but he has an opportunity to kind of correct something. That's why I've always, I'm always also saying that if they go to a bowl game this year and they, that path is still very much alive, if you've watched the Big in West at all this year, or even look yeah. at those box scores. That that hope is alive. If they can do that, it would show tremendous progress. But that starts this Friday. Yep, that starts this Friday against Illinois North at 7 p.m. Friday night kickoff in Champaign, which uh, you almost expect the exact opposite atmosphere of what we <laughs> saw here on Saturday, where it was full of uh, 86,000 plus people and their sold out crowd. And we'll see if that's the case on a Friday night in Champaign um, against. It's a two and three team going against a two and three team. And every game for the remainder of Nebraska's schedule is winnable. I think the toughest one is obviously at Wisconsin. You got Iowa coming in here. Maryland is looking really good, but you have Illinois, then the bye week, Northwestern, Purdue, Michigan State. That's a really and good you stretch. have you have four games there. Illinois, Northwestern, Purdue, Michigan State. You have four games there that are all there for the taking. And then you can see what happens at uh, against Maryland, then at Wisconsin, then when Iowa comes in here, Iowa looking like they may have lost their starting quarterback, yeah. Cade McNamara, and they beat uh, Iowa last year when it had its starting <laughs> quarterback, Spencer Petras, uh, still fully healthy. But that's looking down the road in, uh, in looking at just this matchup against Illinois. Like we said uh, right after the Michigan game in our rapid recap coverage, was that Illinois game? It looks a is a lot more winnable than I think we thought coming into the season. Yeah, it is, and it's it's a game in which you know I, I feel like it's gonna be a classic Big Ten game. This guy, yeah, like, I'm, like 10 I'm to already six. thinking about yeah, I'm thinking about 17-13 is about my score prediction. Uh, once we get to that at the end of the week, it's gonna be classic Big Ten football, right? I'm looking forward to it. I'm fa I'm fired up about that yeah. game to be perfectly honest. Uh, I think it means so much to Nebraska season in the big picture because I think people will feel a lot better, including the people here um, on the team will feel a lot better if they can go out to Champaign and get the win and then head into the bye week. I think the tenor will change quite a bit, um, but it's going to be it's going to be an ugly game. Yeah, it, I think <laughs> there's no way around I that. think it's going to be a lot like what we saw with Minnesota when it was, we all know it's going to be ugly, slow, methodical, mm -hmm. Big Ten style football game. I think that's what we all expect now going into to Illinois. We'll preview that game a little bit more tomorrow and throughout the rest of this week, but last thing to hit on, to hit on from today was injury updates with Deshaun Singleton knee injury, not a season-ending injury yeah, like we, that, we we have <laughs> thought that he might be out, just the way that the ugliness of that injury and then um, hearing that Singleton was emotional coming out of the injury, out of the medical tent and going to the locker room um, during the game, missing the rest of the game. Looks like he's going to be out for an extended period of time, quote-unquote, for Matt Rule, but they expect him back at some point. Um, hopefully later in this season, but he will be out Friday. Also out Friday is going to be Luke Reimer, yep. who it looks like he was trending to come back uh, against Michigan and then hospitalized um, early Saturday morning yep. on game day. He's going to be out Friday, but um, they're sort of just weathering the storm there as yep. far as will he come back? Won't he come back in a uh, later in the season? But he said it's nothing football related. Yeah, and it, and Cam Linhart, he's hoping yep. that they get Cam Linhart back. He did note that Jeff Sims practice. They've been saying that. We'll see if that actually you know kind of comes for, for, to fruition um, this weekend. I still would go ahead and say that I think Hein Harburg will be the starter um, once again, and I think he's earned that right. But we'll see as they kind of continue to play coy on that. Yeah, I mean, last thing to talk about with that in that regard is when he was asked about when Rules asked about quarterback situation if he would 
rotate two guys in. He said he didn't answer that necessarily directly. He just said, I'll do whatever it takes to win. So it sounds like he would be open to open playing to two it. quarterbacks. Yeah, uh, open to it at least. We'll see. Yeah. Well, uh, again, like you said, we'll see um, how the quarterback situation pans out. But I'm with you there that Heinrich Harburg has – he's uh, – the saying goes, you have to learn, you have to not lose football games before you can win them. That's the cliche saying in football, and that's been very prevalent this year in NFL circles and college football circles. That's making a comeback. Uh, but Harburg, I think, has shown that he's the guy to not lose the football game. Maybe he hasn't gone. He's gone out there and won. He, he yeah, went well out there and bit, yeah. uh, won the games against NIU and Louisiana Tech, but. Um, so I think he's probably earned that right. But we'll see on the quarterback situation as we move forward here. We'll be back out here Tuesday for Marcus Satterfield and Tony White at the podium, as well as players who will be available tomorrow. Um, and then we'll see about Wednesday, short weeks. So we might get rule on Wednesday. But that's it for now, unless you had anything else to add. That's it. Nothing for Greg Smith. Nothing for me. I'm Zach Carpenter. Um, reminder, like this video, subscribe to the Inside Nebraska YouTube channel uh, so you get these videos dropped directly into your feed as we uh, will be back out here Tuesday and after the game on Friday night. Uh, so once again, for Greg Smith, I'm Zach Carpenter. We'll catch you guys again next time.